Whoa. Welcome back. Uh, this video will be on the main villain in the Flashers season eight opening crossover. Uh, Despero. Despero. I like how I say it. But we're going to go through his origins and status in DC Comics. So stick around because you're going to learn something today. So, uh, the reveal that Despero was the villain for the crossover makes a lot of sense. Since he is a big Justice League character, um, he first appeared in Justice League uh, number one in 1960. So, he's been a long time villain of the JLA, and he was created by Garner Fox and Mike Skagowski. I think I'm saying that right. Isn't that the guy from Monsters Inc., if I'm not mistaken? Anyways, it makes a lot of sense because. Uh, you know, we, we've had the Justice League debut for the first time in Crisis on Infinite Earths in last year's, not last year's, two years ago. Wow, it's been two years since the last crossover. It's been two years and we've been waiting for a big Justice League villain and I'm glad that they chose Despero. So, going into his origin, uh, you know, he, you can see from his picture, you'll easily be able to tell that he is just a powerful alien. Just a powerful alien? Not really. He's an alien telepath. Okay, he's he's one of the most dangerous uh, mental telepaths in the DC universe, and he's the ruthless conqueror of the planet Kalanor. He's a force to be reckoned with. Now, Despero's battles with the JLA would usually lead to his ultimate demise, of course, without some casualties of some sorts that he has caused. You know, he's a very big threat, so without some any damage or something like that, the Justice League uh, would have some hard time dealing with him. Uh, especially when he's pissed off because you don't want to piss off this guy uh, the many defeats of Despero conjured a burning hatred um, that he had for the heroes especially Martian Manhunter Martian Manhunter was probably the only one who was able to defeat him he <laughs> was able to uh, deuce ex machina him in one of their deadliest battles which tricked Despero into thinking that he actually killed all the heroes now because of this it, it allowed him to let go of his hatred and for some reason regress back to a fetus interesting now uh he was replaced by a robot called elron and for those of you who've watched young justice elron is that little robot that's uh that is next to him when he's fighting shazam and captain adam and miss martian and all of them uh but it appears that in the sh in the young justice show i think it was season one that was or season two he uh he, he didn't appear to be in some sort of control uh uh, you know, over 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 Elrond, and the reason being is because uh, Elrond was supposed to be some sort of uh, antagonist for the Justice League in terms of the way Despero was going to act against them uh, as soon as he made his return. Uh, but we find out when that happens, uh, the return of Despero, it, it, it's pretty much him coming back as an adult, because obviously as a fetus. Yeah. What's the Just League gonna do to that? Uh, so he, he's facing off against the Just League and Lobo. You know, Despair vs. Lobo. It sounds like a boxing match I'd pay to see. After he switched bodies with Elrond, he's accidentally shot by a Duck Hunter. This... This is intriguing. A Duck Hunter shot him by mistake. By mistake. And, um... You know, this this, this destroyed this robotic Despair that he was replaced with. So Elrond was effectively destroyed. You know, pretty different from the Young Justice show, and um, you know, one one of the things is, uh, you're gonna see Despero always returning in some form or fashion. He's always going to come back in some way, and in this case, it's his mind. After his body was destroyed, this robotic form, his mind, who was still out there, it pretty much traveled somewhere all around the universe. You know trying to you know build relations with all these other enemies so eventually it returned to his own body and um with his mental abilities he began going to the young justice and attacking these heroes now i don't know if this storyline was adapted into the show but you know he went up against superboy and tim drake robin this is uh the kind of kent superboy uh and along with uh the rest of the young justice superboy man managed to banish him to another dimension but then again he is going to return he returns once again to help the injustice league and the secret society of supervillains defeat the jsa and jla uh because you know at this point 
you've lost so many times you can't do it on your own right? it's just like the rogues you need to get with us with a team and really try your best to defeat the justice league they are the greatest most powerful superheroes on planet earth you know don't, don't don't mess with them as simple as that but he continues to mess with them and you know what happens he actually tries to manipulate the villains to uh, his own his own advantage and that's usually his type of character the sparrow usually manipulates other people no matter what to gain an advantage uh, and, and, and win and try to win um, and usually it's whatever personal issues that they're dealing with with his telepathy with his ability to go into someone's mind and take control of them or to really mess with them he can take advantage of any personal issues they have any crises that they're going through and that's the way he's able to win but um eventually this would lead to his uh jail uh, jailment is that a word imprisonment by hal jordan on oa planet oa so i think you know from that point on he's pretty much safe there you know like, there's not a lot you can that he can do there but look guess what this fish had always found a way to come back all right with a younger version of himself meeting the time stealers time stealers very obscure characters but again they uh they helped him create an alternate universe of his very own liking and of course booster gold rip hunter and many other heroes find out and restore the universe when they face off against this younger version now this younger version may not be as powerful but he was still a force to be reckoned with uh, now jumping into the new 52 this is when um it's pretty much he he, he it's it's copy and paste from the pre new 52 era as in the 1980s running up to 2009 before the new 52 new 52 copy and paste that's all it is uh he appears in future state in recent comics um you know some some, some story there i did not read up on it He's had some adventures with Hawkman, Adam Strange, with Ran and Thanagar adventures and everything. But um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much all it is. Most of his history is in uh, the post-crisis pre Nifty 2 era. But with that being said, that's, that's, that, that's it on the Sparrow. That's, it'll be interesting to see how the crossover adapts it. Now, one thing here, I'm surprised that Martian Manhunter, I may not have read read it somewhere but i'm surprised that martian manhunter and the sparrow have not encountered each other in like a telepathic mind battle like that would be in interesting to see hopefully martian manhunter appears in the crossover so we can see that happen you know if you're listening if anyone has links with the um if anyone has relationships with the people at the cw please tell them to put martian manhunter and the sparrow in like a mind battle you know simon and miss martian style from season one of young justice that'd be pretty cool to see but that was the Sparrow Explained. Um, there's more to my channel to know about the crossover. I've got a video on Armageddon. Uh, now, without, be, uh, without further ado, we out now. You know, Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. You shall now like and subscribe. I'm out. Dun, dun, dun.